Hello and welcome to Talent Sprint again. I welcome you to the second part of the discussion on monetary policy. This is the second video on monetary policy or monetary policy 2 as we may call it. And in this video we are going to discuss the qualitative methods of controlling money supply by Reserve Bank of India and various other factors of monetary policy in India. One of the first qualitative methods employed by Reserve Bank of India is what is known as the credit suasion. Credit suasion is nothing but persuading banks to lend or not to lend either to a particular set of industries or to lend more or lend less to a particular set of industries. This is called as credit suasion. On the one hand, well, RBI, as we have seen in the previous video, imposes quantitative restrictions like cash reserve ratio, statutory liquidity ratio, repo ratio, repo rate, reverse repo rate, bank rate, etc., etc. The qualitative methods, the one of the easiest methods adopted by Reserve Bank of India is the credit suasion. Every now and then, Reserve Bank of India uh, issues circulars advising banks either to stop lending to a particular industry or to reduce lending to a particular industry or sometimes in order to encourage a certain particular a certain industry they will ask the, the commercial banks to increase their lending to a particular industry this is known as credit suasion that is the first qualitative method which is adopted by the reserve bank of india from time to time or they could also do rationing to specific industries what is rationing rationing is nothing but they will say that they, i mean when i say they the reserve bank of india can say that the commercial banks cannot lend more than X percentage to X industry. This is called rationing. For example, the rationing could be either increase or decrease or a minimum percentage. I will give you an example of a rationing when I say that they can come out with an, the RBI can come out with an announcement saying that the banks cannot lend more than 5% to the real estate sector. For example, this is just an example I'm giving you. The banks cannot lend more than 5% of their total assets to the real estate sector. This is called credit rationing. This rationing also helps the banks to plan their money well in advance or plan their money supply well in advance. And this in turn will mean that the banks can plan for their credit policies well in time. This is called credit rationing. It could also mean that they will impose higher margins on lending to certain industries. There have been times when Reserve Bank of India has said that you cannot lend to all the industries with the same margin. I'll give you an example for this. Banks often lend to individuals against pledge of company shares. If one understands the share market closely, the price of company shares are bound to fluctuate from time to time. That means when the individual pledges the shares to the bank and the bank gives him a loan, the bank will want a higher margin on these loans, which means that basically the banks are saying that I want to secure my loans more effectively. And how is the securing done? It's done by means of margins. What is a margin? A margin is the amount of money which the bank will retain as its collateral for the, for the loan to be given. To give you an example, when the bank says that I want a 50% margin, it means that for every 100 rupees of loan that you actually need in your hand, you will have to give 200 rupees worth of security. And this is the example of what is known as a higher margin rate. Banks can, while lending for shares, say that they will want a 50% margin or a 75% margin, while in some other cases, uh, lending against hypothecation of goods, they may say the margin could be only 25%. Why the margin on shares is higher is because the share prices fluctuate very widely, and in, during the course of a time, the prices of shares pledged to the bank can fall drastically which means that the amount of money lent by the banks could themselves be in danger. And when the money is in danger, the banks need security for their loans. And that's the reason why the banks want to have a higher margin. This is one of the 
qualitative methods of money supply control by the Reserve Bank of India when they say that they will insist on a higher margin from the borrowers and this could be in the form of loans given against shares or loans given against gold ornaments, loans given against housing properties, loans given against machinery, it could be anything. So the margin will depend on the security that is offered. And similarly, they could also give impose higher margins on certain industries as a whole. For example, the tobacco industry. Smoking is considered injurious to health and the government would like everything possible to reduce the supply of tobacco in the country. And for, to reduce the supply of tobacco in the country, the government may say that for people who want to borrow against tobacco cultivation or cigarette manufacturing, etc., etc., the government, the um, uh, consumer or the customer has to give a higher margin to the bank's concern. This is one way of reducing the money supply to the customers for certain types of industries. They could also involved in direct action. The RBI can intervene directly and say that certain types of industries will not be given credit. Instead of reducing the amount of money that is given to them, they can completely ban loans altogether. That is called direct action. One of the ways in which RBI imposes qualitative restrictions is called the priority sector lending. The priority sector lending, is, 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 uh, it means that the government gives priority to certain sectors of the economy and the banks through RBA have been advised to concentrate on this priority sector. What is priority sector? What is priority sector or what are the aspects of priority sector lending? The first is agriculture. Agriculture has always remained a top priority for Indian economy. India survives on agriculture and when the agriculture turns out to be good, Indian economy also turns out to be good. So one of the first and foremost aspects of priority lending in the, in the country for Reserve Bank of India is agriculture. The next is micro, small and medium enterprises. What is a micro enterprise? One which has got only one or two units. There could be a lathe shed, there could be a drilling unit, there could be a a small foundry, these are all called micro enterprises. Small scale organizations are those which involve a kind of a small setup where they will be manufacturing and selling only in a particular region. That is called small enterprises. Medium enterprises are those which have multiple facilities with them and which have a slightly higher market compared to the small scale, uh, small scale enterprises. So micro, small and medium enterprises are also a part of the priority sector lending announced by Reserve Bank of India. Export credit is one of the areas of priority sector lending for the uh, banks in India. What is export credit? Export credit simply means financing of exporters. As simple as that. Export credit means financing of exporters. We all will very well understand when we, we export, we get foreign exchange. That means that when somebody in the United States, for example, buys some goods or services from India, he will have to pay the exporter the money in terms of the American currency, which is US dollar. And with an appreciating US dollar, the exporters will bring in more foreign currency into India. That means that the country will stand to gain because of higher dollar reserves. That means that the more the dollar exports are happening, it is better for the economy whenever and especially when the dollar is stronger than the rupee. That means the country will always stand to gain if the exports are more because the, that, that means they'll have, they will receive more money from the foreign currency. If imports are more, they will have to pay more to the foreign currency, whereas if exports are more, they will pay less to the foreign currency, or in other words, they will receive more from the foreign customers. So export credit is an area of priority sector lending for commercial banks in India. Education is another priority sector lending. Aim of the government of India to educate as many people as possible. So education is definitely a priority sector lending area for the banks is one of the topmost priorities of the, of the government of India at any point in time. Government has always said every Indian must have a house. And for housing, 
The banks have to lend consistently and continuously. Housing is definitely a priority sector for the banks to lend in as much as agriculture is. Social infrastructure. What is meant by social infrastructure? Social infrastructure is nothing but those uh, building of those infrastructure which are common for the causes of society. That means that roads, bridges, dams, irrigation canals, water projects, these are all called the social infrastructure projects. Social infrastructure does not mean real estate. Social infrastructure does not mean meaning companies or housing complexes. It rather means those which are shared by the society at large. And that is why I gave the example of roads, bridges, canals, waterways, etc. These are called social infrastructure. Another area of priority sector lending is renewable energy. For long, we have depended on hydro energy as a main source of energy. Then we shifted to power energy. I mean, uh, power, uh, then we shifted to uh, thermal power. And now the focus is on renewable energy. What is renewable energy? One example of that is solar energy, which costs very little to renew. Every day, you can, the solar panels can pick up the uh, uh, light from the sunlight and they can produce power. This is called renewable energy. Renewable energy is the main important focus item for the, uh, for the government and hence the government through the RBI gives a priority sector push for the renewable energy. What are the various targets for priority sector lending for the commercial banks as per RBI as of now? As of now, 40% of the net credit should go to the priority sector. 40% of the net bank credit should go to the priority sector. To give you the same example, whenever a bank mobilizes 100 rupees as deposits, 4% or 4 rupees will go away as cash reserve ratio. 20.5% or 20.5 rupees will go away as statutory liquidity ratio. That means total from a total of 100 rupees of deposits, 24.5 rupees will go away as SRR, I mean CRR and SLR, which means that the remaining 75.5% is all they can lend. And out of this, this is called the 75.5% is called the net bank credit. I mean, to illustrate this, I will just write down and show you. The bank mobilizes 100 rupees as deposits. 4 rupees goes as CRR. 20.5 rupees goes as SLR. That means the total 24.5 goes away in the form of reserves. The remaining 75 Point five is all that can be lent, or is all can be that can be lent. Out of this seventy-five point five uh, five rupees, forty percent is the net. Forty percent is the priority sector advances. In other words, forty percent of seventy-five point five, that approximately comes down comes to about uh, comes to about uh, thirty-two rupees of the total hundred. 32 rupees is what is known is to be given to priority sector credit. 40% of the net bank credit. What is net bank credit? Of the net amount which the bank has lent to the customers after meeting the CRR and SLR requirements. So for when the bank mobilizes 100 rupees, 24.5 goes in the form of reserves and uh, cash, cash and statutory reserves and 74.5 can be lent and this 74 out of the 75.5 rupees 40 percent of this 75.5 can be i mean has to be given to the priority sector that is the meaning of the word priority sector so 40 percent of the bank credit goes to the uh, net bank credit goes to priority sector and out of this 40 percent 18 percent of the net bank credit must go to agriculture in other words 18% of that 75.5 rupees has, go, has to go to agriculture. 40% of the net bank credit must go to priority sector lending. 18.5% of the net bank credit must go to agriculture. 7.5% of the net bank credit must go to micro enterprises. When I say micro, it means micro, small and medium enterprises. 
10% of the net bank credit must go to the weaker sections of the society. What is the weaker section? The government will announce from time to time. They will announce that people below the poverty line belong to the weaker sections of the society. And 10% of the net bank credit, 10% of that 75.5 rupees which I was referring to, that must go to the weaker sections of the society. These are applicable to all the scheduled commercial banks and to those foreign banks who have more than 20 branches in India. For those having foreign branches having more than 20 branches in India and to all the scheduled commercial banks, these priority sector targets are applicable. For foreign banks having less than 20 branches, these priority sector lending targets have to be achieved before the end of the fiscal year 2018. So these are the qualitative methods by which Reserve Bank of India ensures that the monetary uh, policy is framed, implemented and regulated by the uh, Government of India through the Reserve Bank of India. So this completes the second part of the monetary, monetary policy video. So I will see you again with a different topic in the next video. Until then, thanks for watching and bye.